On today's Locked On Senators, one of our favorite shows of the year. The draft lottery has come and gone, and now it's time for us to put our GM hats on and make our picks in this version of our mock draft. We do the top eight picks where Ross and I each make our own selection for the Ottawa Senators at seven. Looking forward to a little contentiousness and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1042 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your $5 bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube where we say hello and let you know a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Thursday, May 9th, and Pilsy, the coaching carousel continues as we hit record. Sheldon Keefe is out in Toronto, and I just want it on record that I've always, always thought that Craig Berube was an overrated coach. Yeah, definitely. That's a guy you don't want to bring in uh, to your franchise. But, Ross, I don't think the Leafs have to worry about that. I mean they have a guy on their bench waiting in the wings in Guy Boucher. So just elevate Guy Boucher, get back to the one three one, get the system going, or maybe you bring back DJ Smith. There's lots of good candidates out there for the Leafs. I just wanted to get ahead of that tape, Pills. Yeah, I know that it was coming. Well, and, and Ross, I'm surprised that the Leafs went ahead and uh, fired Sheldon Keefe when Travis Green was off the market. Yeah, he, they That's waited crazy. too long. A lot yeah. of people are saying they waited too long and they lost out on the best candidate yeah. available. Last few days on the show, we've covered Travis Green's introductory press conference, the hiring as a whole, and tomorrow, Jamie Noodles McLennan will be on. We'll chat a little goaltending, how can Ottawa fix it, and what can Travis Green do, and who, who is he? What, what's he been like as a player? Those two played six years together. But Pilsy, this is one of our favorite shows every year. We do two mock drafts. We don't saturate the market. We do one after the draft lottery where we get to number seven. And then who's right behind? Who did, who did Ottawa pass on that we think would go next to Seattle in this case? Now, I'm getting some flashbacks though, Pilsy, because two Uh-oh. years ago, we did all the draft content knowing that it was seventh overall. And then they traded it the night before the draft alt or hours before the draft. Hours I should before. Say. Yes. Yeah. I, I had Marco Casper already in the Ottawa senators Jersey. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's a Detroit red wing. And now look, first things first, I would like to completely make it in stone. The Ottawa senators cannot trade this pick. They no. have to make this pick at seven. And we got confirmation from Bruce that uh, they've announced that they will not be forfeiting this pick for the Dadanov uh, punishment. Thank you. Yeah, it saved us a 24-hour stream that would have had a lot of angry words said because this is a draft that the Senators, you could argue that every team in the top 10 will say, they'll all say it, but I think a lot of them could mean it this year, that they get their second best player in the draft because Bob McKenzie said it, this draft from two to about 11 is about as wide open as possible. At the end of today's show, I'm going to unveil my list of 13 players that I would be happy with at number seven. It is that extensive. Now I'm counting Macklin Celebrini, Artyom Levshunov, and Ivan Demidov, three players who I'm convinced will be off the board. So to me, that's kind of the top tier. So from four until 15, there's a lot of players that I like. For the Ottawa Senators, but let's cut the cut the crap and get the top one out of the way because there's one thing that is 
in stone and I watched Mike Greer have his press conference, they straight up asked him, you're going to take Macklin? He's like, yeah. Like there's, there's no secret. There's no, you know, gimmick. There's no, Oh, I don't know if, if he could, I think Chicago even said that, or maybe it was Bedard where he's like, you know, if, if I'm lucky enough to get taken by them, but with the connections he has to the Bay area, the connections, I mean, to BU guys, Mike Greer played a BU Macklin Mm -hmm. Celebrini's there. It just makes sense on every single level that Macklin Celebrini is the guy. So to lead off our draft coverage here, our mock draft 1.0, it is the easiest selection that we will ever make. And that is that we will be taking Macklin Celebrini first overall for the San Jose Sharks. What do the Sharks get in Macklin Celebrini? Well, I mean, when you have a one, two punch of Will Smith and Macklin Celebrini, that's going to be very exciting. Um, Ross, so are you saying that the San Jose Sharks aren't going to take their time allotted and it's just going to start with the Chicago Blackhawks at the draft? That's always the one thing that drives me nuts, especially when there's a clear number one. That team should not have to take any time at the draft. Let's just move on here. Like they're on the clock. It's like, come on, dude. You've You've been on the clock for weeks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, come on. Um, But yeah, obviously great player. I think... I shouldn't say the key, but a big part of this, Ross, is bringing some San Jose culture to the Sharks, right? This is a guy who grew, uh, grew up uh, part of the time in the Bay Area. We know his dad works for the uh, Golden State Warriors. So it's nice for them to have that homecoming thing. Maybe they'll be lucky enough to get a picture of Macklin Celebrini in the San Jose Sharks pajamas. That would be awesome for the organization. But this is a guy that's going to come in and he's going to light it up with this team. And I think, Ross... That's going to – them getting Mack and Celebrini is going to help them find a coach. Lots of coaches are going to be interested in this. It's going to help them bring in free agents. It's going to help some of their prospects that are like, ah, I don't know if I want to go to one of the worst teams in this generation. Maybe I'll just go to college. Maybe that will entice them to come to the NHL sooner. So it just brings so much more legitimacy to the San Jose Sharks organization. They're going to get Taylor Hall, I guess. He follows around every first overall pick. Yeah, that's well, no, it's t- Taylor Hall is what you bring him in if you need the first overall, right? Well, with Chicago, they got him after, right? They That's kind of like the the luring. Get, of, oh, yeah, true. They got him after. Yes, they did. Yeah, but, but every still, other scenario other than Arizona, it's been the opposite way. They've brought him in. He sprinkled a little fairy dust and then they get first overall. Amazing. But I agree with you. I think more so with free agents because they want to actually play with them. Whereas a coach, I mean, they still do have a lot of young talent. That Will Smith kid's going to be a star too. So now they've kind of got that one-two punch. William Eklund, they're hoping, takes another step. And Macklin Celebrini is a guaranteed star. Like his floor is so high because his compete is off the charts. He's got a great shot and the vision. Like they show, I was watching a few of his passes, man. No look backhand. He just knows where everything is around the ice. So a phenomenal first overall pick. Well now, done, I don't, don't want to get into a situation where, you know, we're, we're comparing already where it's like, where does he rank among the first overall picks in the last decade? I think right. the time will tell, but he's going to be an immediate impact player when he steps foot on the ice in the National Hockey League. So now we go to number two. The Chicago Blackhawks, after adding Connor Bedard last year, along with a whole host of other picks, like they have really stocked the cupboard in the last number of drafts. You look at like a a guy like uh, Frank Nazar, they got a couple of years ago. They've gotten their uh, Kevin Korchinski's. They've really done a lot at both ends of the ice in their top 10 with their draft picks. And then they've swung on on a couple. Remember, Oliver Moore dropped to them in like the late teens. We were surprised about that That last year, too. Yeah. So they already have a great nucleus. Where are we going to go at number two for the Chicago Blackhawks? You want me to say it and then you're going to reveal it? Well, announce the pick. All right. The Chicago Blackhawks with the second overall pick in the 2024 NHL draft are pleased to select Ivan Demidov. The most talented outside of Macklin Celebrini. Uh, Miss me with the Russian factor. Miss me with any sort of positional need. You just have to think what a duo of Ivan Demidov and Connor Bedard could do terrorizing the National Hockey League. And also of note, Demidov only has one year left on his KHL contract. And he got kind of, I don't want to say screwed. I don't understand the system enough in Russia, but he barely got to even play 
in the KHL. Like he was playing Lost. among weaker co- competition all year. And he's only got that one year left. And apparently he doesn't really want to negotiate too much. He only got four KHL games this past season was stuck playing in the MHL. And what did he do? How about two points per game? Like this guy is a, a star. And look, I was watching the, uh, the elite prospects video with David St. Louis on him. A couple interesting notes uh, on Ivan Demidov. He has that unique skating style that 10 2 we see it a lot with brant clark ottawa kid out in los angeles a ninth overall pick a couple of years ago and that antonio stranges who still hasn't made it remember him he was like his highlight reel with yep. the london knights was wild but mitch varner does it a bunch too where they've got that 10 yeah. 2 they're they almost look like they're figure skating out there but the way that he's able to pull off these moves like he, he's an absolute talent so i think that chicago they lost the lottery in a sense i guess they stayed put but they didn't win they stay at second they get an absolute star and not only that but a guy who could be the perfect running mate for Connor bedard well ross you, you think of uh like combos like patrick kane and Ar- artem panari artem panarin, panarin. <laughs> panarin. <laughs> i always do that for some reason um panarin yeah like that could be a, a new age combo like that Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Like you think of Taves and Kane, but right? One center, one winger. Now, Demidov, I think, leave him on the wing. Just let him cook over there. And I don't know who you're putting on the other side, but I think you you are going to have to wait. Now, whether it's one or two or three years, that would almost entice me more because the Hawks are not competing next year. I think that's fair to say. I don't think I'm breaking any news. So why not have Bedard entering his prime being like 22, 23, and then bang, you got a guy coming in on an entry level contract for three seasons and all three of those, he's probably going to be more mature. Now, Matt V. Michkov last year fell to seven. Craig Button last night, I watched him say that Demidov is better than Matt V. Michkov. He's number two for me. He's number two for the Chicago Blackhawks. And that's where we're going to roll right here on our, Mock Draft 1.0 with Locked On Senators. On the other side, we'll do picks three through six, and we're going to make it all suspenseful leading up to the Ottawa Senators pick at number seven because this is Locked On Senators. If you're a fan of another team, you're checking in on this for the Mock Draft, let us know in the comments not only who we picked, but I'm curious to know. Let us know who you're a fan of and what players you're interested in most for your team to draft. We'll read those comments all day really appreciate all the uh, the engagement with the podcast really does help the show grow on the other side we will go three through six right here you're listening locked on senators your team every day today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at indeed look there's no i in team but there is one in indeed and that's the hiring platform you need to build your team when you're hiring you need indeed indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract interview and hire all in one simple place instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills do it all with indeed One of the things I love about Indeed is the candidates you invite to apply are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in the search. Sit back, relax, let Indeed do the hard work for you. Indeed's hiring platform matches you with quality candidates instantly. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have job requirements. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. on senators we are your team every day something fun if you guys are draft nerds out there go check out our mock drafts from 2022 and 2023 they live always on youtube and wherever you get your podcast always fun to see who rises who falls once the dust settles and the players can go do what they do best and that's score defend and play the game of hockey at a very high level all right back to the mock draft we're at number three with the Anaheim Ducks. And this is still, to me, 
consensus season, and it's it's number three. It's the first defenseman off the board. We've got the Anaheim Ducks taking from Belarus and the Michigan State University. It is Artyom Levshunov. Why is this a great pick for the Anaheim Ducks? It's a great pick for any team, Ross. Uh, I think Lev Shunov is the best defenseman here. He's got size. He's a right-hand shot. He's already playing in North America, so he's more accustomed to the more North American game. And he's someone that you look at an Anaheim Ducks team that has so much talent up front. Uh, you look at uh, Zegris. You look at McTavish. McTavish. Yeah, you look at uh, Cutter Gauthier now. Leo, Leo Carlson. Leo Carlson, and they just traded away Jamie Drysdale. So they're going to want to shore up that right-hand shot uh, position. They already have lots of great defensemen as well. I'm not saying they lack on the decor, but I think at this point with Celebrini and Demidov gone, you just make the right choice and take Lev Shunov here if I'm Anaheim. Lev Shunov was recently number four on Bob McKenzie's top 30, uh, top 15 right at the draft lottery. Craig Button had him at number five. Scott Wheeler has him at number three on his list. Corey Pronman and Chris Peters both have him at number two. That's how high some people are. Excuse me, on uh, on Artyom Lev Shunov. He, he's an activating big defenseman too. Like he, he's not afraid to jump into the rush and make plays. And I think the fact that he's already playing college hockey is a huge bonus that teams are really going to appreciate because there is no thought that he's going to be a guy who takes two, three years. I think he's a guy, I don't think it's the worst thing for him to go back to Michigan State, play with the Spartans one more year. But other than that, he could be the most NHL ready not only defenseman, but you could argue the most NHL ready player outside of Macklin Celebrini for this draft. So Anaheim, they've been in a long rebuild. You mentioned all the talent that they've already accumulated. It feels like he could be a guy where like giddy up and go here in two years and have him playing 18 minutes a night right off the bat on his entry level contract. So I love this pick for Artyom Levshunov. And I think that we might see him go number two. If Chicago feels like he's that elite as a defenseman, I'm curious to see that. But I think that these are the top three picks. I think that they have separated from everyone else. And for me, the draft starts at number four. Yep. I'd agree, Ross. Yep. At number four, the Columbus Blue Jackets, a team that's no secret to drafting high. They got Adam Fantilli last year, a a huge pick. And I know he missed some time with injury this year, but that almost guaranteed them a bottom four pick. And they ultimately get that. They, at number four, they've got such a stable of young defensemen as well. David Yerichek, two years ago. They got Stanislav Sposil in the in the second round a couple of years ago. They're a team that you're just looking for best player available. Now, Yarmo Kekalainen, their old general manager who's been fired, he was a big part of scouting for them as well. He was a head scout before. He was a scout for the Ottawa Senators back in the day, you might recall. So with that said, there is a bit of a, a fog over the Columbus Blue Jackets because we don't know. They could go with Consta Hellenius. They could go with a different uh, avenue that maybe we're not expecting. Is there another Russian that maybe they like? Because we know that they've been high on Russians before. Marchenko, uh, Ch- um, not Chibrikov. Who am I thinking of? The other guy who nobody knew his name. Remember? Brian Burke's like, yeah, I got to be honest. I have no clue who this is. Chinikov. Uh, Chinikov. Yeah, or yeah, was it Ma- Kirill Marchenko? No, Marchenko people knew, but he can shoot okay. the puck. They can both yeah. shoot the puck. Yeah. But the guy who I was thinking of is Chinikov there. So with the, with the fourth overall pick, we've decided – Size, speed, skill down the middle. We're going to go with Caden Lidstrom out of Medicine Hat. Why is this a great pick for Columbus? Well, we talked about, um, you know, teams having a good one-two punch like the Sharks with Celebrini and uh, Will Smith. If you can get a one-two punch of Fantilli and Lindstrom, that's going to set up this organization nicely, Ross, especially when you look at I mean, you can put Chinnikov on the wing for one of them, and then you can put Kirill Marchenko on the wing for the other one, right? And then Johnny Goudreau, Patrick Laine, those guys get in the mix as well. So I think for the Columbus Blue Jackets, setting your team up down the middle should be their priority because I know it it hasn't looked the greatest on ice, but on paper, I really like the way their decor is set up with uh, Wierenski, Severson, Provorov, uh, and then you got Bockfist, Jake Bean, Yerchek, you mentioned. Like, they, they've they got 
a lot of options on D right now. So I think you take, I would argue best player available here, Ross, and you nab your centerman and you get your one, two punch. Right. Like he's, he's just a freak. Like think about a one, two punch down the middle too, with, with Fantilli where it's just like, okay, you, you go with skill. Now you're going with the six foot three, 200 pound centerman. Now he missed a lot of time this year with an injury and, and that it sucks to see, but still 27 goals in 32 games. And it's not an injury. I, I think it was a hand, but I don't want to speak out of turn, but the BC native to me, he's a guy who I still need to do a bit more research on, but he's a guy who for me, for me, it's just screams. And you look at the way that, um, that the NHL scouts and who we use ranked him fifth overall on Bob McKenzie's list. He's as high as number two on hockey prospect.com elite prospects. And they're usually hard on like the, the big skilled centermen, right? Cause they're all about skating with elite prospects. They've got him at number three on their most recent ranking. So I think this, this should make Columbus blue jackets fans very happy because if he doesn't go number four, he's absolutely going number five to the Montreal Canadians. I think Habs and their fans and their management would be salivating to get Caden Lidstrom on their team, but he's off the board. So where does Montreal go? They had fifth overall last year. They decided to go the route of a defenseman right shot with David Reinbacker out of Switzerland. He's already come over at the end of his Swiss league season played in the AHL for a few games in the regular season. So he's already in the system. He'll be at training camp next year. And now where do they go? Because this is now a number of years of top picks for the Montreal Canadiens. In 2022, they got the first overall pick and went with Uri Slavkovsky, who's really coming into his own. So where do you think Kent Hughes goes here at number five? Well, Montreal definitely needs a forward here. I think they've shored up their defense really nicely with Lane Hudson, Caden Gooley, like they've David Reinbacker, you already mentioned. So I think they'd be disappointed. Linster doesn't come to them, but they got to go with the forward here, in my opinion. And they are going to go from Spokane, Centerman, Berkeley, Catton. This guy... I was watching a ton of videos on him yesterday. He was one of the players where I didn't know too much about before last night. Holy off the rush. This guy is a magician. Not only does he have a great shot, but his hands that he can pull the moves that he can pull off with his hands at full speed is what really caught my attention about Berkeley cat. And who's yeah. I mean, rhyme off his points right now. Didn't he have like 140 points in the dub last year? Yeah, he put up big points. And Ross, I almost, I don't like giving the Montreal Canadiens Berkeley Catton because honestly, apart from the top three, which we've decided are those those guys are going top three, Berkeley Catton might be my top guy. I have him personally ahead of Lindstrom um, just because the, the skill is so good. He had 116 points. That's what it was. In 68 games with the Spokane Chiefs. And the thing is, I would argue he's probably the best skater in this draft. Like his Easily. skating is insane. He's one of those guys. And I always talk about it that you need a goal. You need it quick. The rest of your lines going for a line change. He's the only one out there. He'll just go down the wing, beat a defenseman wide cut to the middle and score. Like he, he can just rip one past the goalie. He's so deceptive. And I think Berkeley Catton, if the Montreal Canadians are able to get him, that's a pick they're going to like. That's a hugely like home run type pick for, for them. And he might need two years. I think he's the guy who goes back to junior for one more year. And then you kind of see where you're at, but he's a guy who's like, he screams top six four in the national hockey league. And I mean, at five, you hope so you're not drafting usually in the top 10 for a bottom six player usually, but with Berkeley cat and you're, you're betting on upside. And obviously you have to have a running mate when you're in junior. So for him, it was Connor roulette, but, he had six more points than Connor Roulette or eight more points than Connor Roulette. The next highest point total on the team was 71. Yeah. So he's at 45 more points than the guy who had third most points on his team. He was in a pretty tough situation in Spokane. They didn't get out of the first round. They lost in four games. He still put up four assists, no goals, but still four assists. He, he's just a, a huge home run swing and, like you said, I don't love giving it to the Montreal Canadiens, but obviously we're trying to do this in a um, in a legitimate fashion. We're not unbiased, trying to be, as everyone knows. We are not biased on this show. We are the most unbiased. A lot of Correct. people say. Now, 
in terms of their draft rankings, they haven't caught up yet. Like Berkeley Catton, still 11th on Bob McKenzie's list. He's as high as number six with Corey Prodman, seven with elite prospects and, and Chris Peters. But I would not be surprised for him to be here, especially if Lidstrom goes off the board early and if four of the top five picks are, or sorry, three of the first four picks are forwards, then all of a sudden Montreal's in a bit of a predicament because they could go defensemen here. There's some great defensemen that are still available in the draft, right shot defensemen at that. But they took their right shot defenseman last year. I think if you could rewind and take Matt Vemichkov last year and then take one of the defensemen this year, that might have been a better decision. Yeah. But I don't think you can argue, especially with the upside that you would get from Berkeley Catton. So we have Berkeley Catton going number five to the Montreal Canadiens. On the other side, we will get to the Utah HC. Who's going to be the first pick? Now, we can actually look at history to project because Bill Armstrong is still the general manager, same scouting staff all retained. So who does Utah take and what does that leave for the senators at number seven? That's all next. You're listening to locked on senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA, in the NHL, and baseball is in full swing with the regular season, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets, guaranteed, guaranteed. That's $150 whether you win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use you can put bets together get a little parlay action maybe get some futures in like i always say you can't just be doing single game betting or betting on the money line or or over you got to mix in some props mix in some futures you got to have a diversified portfolio when it comes to your fan duel account so what are you waiting for Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Pilvy, let's get right back into the draft lottery we go. But first, how did we get here? Well, first overall, we've taken Macklin Celebrini from Boston University First overall to the San Jose Sharks. That, Bold. you can put it in hieroglyphics. It's so etched in stone. Number two, Ivan Demidov from the KHL, MHL, VHL. He's in Russia, and he's going to come here with a chip on his shoulder. Sounds like he wants to get over here as soon as possible. We've got him going number two, the winger to the Chicago Blackhawks. At number three, right shot defenseman from Belarus playing for Michigan State in the NCAA. To the Anaheim Ducks, Artem Levshunov. Number four from Medicine Hat, BC boy, Caden Lidstrom. Big centerman, imposing figure, ton of skill, great shot. And then at number five, Berkeley Catton. He dazzles, he razzles, and he's got great off-the-rush instincts. He's going number five to Montreal. That leaves us with number six, Utah HC. What is Utah going to do are they going to take a big splash are they going to try to take a name maybe this is where Tej Aginla goes where all their fans are like well I've heard of that guy maybe that gets them a little more interested in this new team but we've decided to go with best player available they've got a ton of talent in their stable though the Coyotes drafting over the last number of years we loved the Dmitry Simashev pick some people thought it was too high We loved that last year when they took him sixth overall. And then with the pick they acquired in the Jacob Chikrin deal, they got Daniil Boot, which it's really unfortunate that Boot didn't go to Montreal because (laughs) B-U-T means goal in French. That would have just been all time. Don't think they speak too much French in Utah, but (laughs) what they do is have a new defenseman, Ziv Bouillam is going to be our pick here from the University of Denver, the younger brother of Shai Booyam, who went in, uh, I believe, the late first, early second to the Detroit Red Wings in a couple drafts ago. Now, Zeev Booyam, national champion this year with the University of Denver, smoothest skater in the draft, one of. This guy is a modern-day defenseman where it's like a two-way defenseman. I don't think he's, his numbers are going to pop. He's not going to be a 70, 80-point guy. But he's going to be a guy where you put out in the last two minutes 
whether you need a goal or you need to defend a one goal lead. Yeah. And if you're Utah, uh, Denver, not too far away. So they've probably got to see him a lot. And this is a guy that maybe not a home run swing, but as a new franchise, I feel like this is just such a safe, comforting pick. You know, you're going to get an NHL player out of him. The work ethic is off the charts with Zeev William. And if you want to learn more about him, just listen to any time his head coach, uh, David Carl, talked about him. He, he has glowing, glowing reviews. And I think he even said that he believes Zeev Bouillam is the top defenseman in this draft. Like, that's where it's at. It's no joke for, for uh, how his potential could just skyrocket. So for Utah to get him at six, I think they're going to be stoked. And he's a guy who's just gotten better and better. He's one of those guys where I believe he rose on Bob McKenzie's list from, um, I think he was in the mid teens. I think he rose on everyone's list, Ross. And he's going to continue to, because the more you watch this guy skate, the more you fall in love with him. Zeev Bouillon was listed at number eight on Bob McKenzie's list, up from about 13 or 14. And on the others, like Scott Wheeler, Craig Button, and Corey Pronman all have him at fourth on their list now, like just involved in all three zones. He's just going to be a star. And I'd be very happy if he is a guy, the Ottawa senators got at number seven, despite being a left shot. I know we've talked so much about drafting for need, but I'm now going more. So best player available when you're drafting this high and Ottawa hopes that it doesn't happen too much more because obviously they are losing out on one of their next two first round picks. They just need to take the best player available. And to me, I think the way that we've done this, that every player above Ottawa would be my pick for the Senators. Are you feeling that way as well? Yeah, pr- pretty much. Um, I definitely, like I mentioned, I love Berkeley Cat, and I haven't d- uh, dived too deep into Lindstrom yet. Lev Shunov would be my ultimate top guy. Uh, Demidov, I, I I don't know. I don't know if that's the route the Sens would go, even if he fell to them. And then obviously Salabrini's gone. So no, you have to. Demidov has too much talent. You have to. You have to take the best player available. The only guy I'd say is Berkeley Catton. Like there's a guy who we'll get to, and it's it's more so just like if the Sens have depth at one position, it's center to me. And I know you could say left shot defenseman as well, but we know that that's going to figure itself out this summer, that at least one of, if Hopefully. not two of, Branstrom, Tricker, and Shabbat are, are going to be gone with Jake Sanderson staying forever, uh, just starting that eight-year contract. So uh, if I'm the Ottawa Senators, like I'm, I'm very okay with going with winger or either left or right shot defenseman. That's I, I don't think a centerman is the play here. Look no at the goalies. age of Ottawa Senators. No, there there's not a goalie in like the top 50 yeah, this year. I'll be, there's not a goalie in sight, unfortunately. I missed the 2021 draft where there were two yeah. that were like, whoa, two goalies, and then they both fell anyways. Yeah. And Boss ended up going in front of Wallstead as well. Um, neither of that has really panned out yet, but again, goalies take time. Okay, Ottawa Senators. Now, we set it off the top. We got our own picks. Would you like to lead us off with yours, or would you like to pass over the honors? You know what? I'll pass over the honors here, Ross. That's very nice. With the Ottawa Senators pick, seventh overall from the Kelowna Rockets, I would like to take Tiege Iginla for the pick. And I am I would just like it on record that I am not choosing it because his name's Aginla. There's a few great videos out there online right now of Tiege Aginla. And the move from center to the wing really helped Aginla this past year. He exploded offensively. He he grinds. He's able to be a contributing member defensively as well. Doesn't have the same edge as Jerome Aginla. He's not throwing huge hits or anything like that. But he's also, here's what I love, Pilsy. One of the youngest players in this draft class. And that just allows so much extra runway. And we've seen that with Jake Sanderson as a prime example. Ridley Gregg, another late draft pick, like a late uh, birthday, both like August, July, uh, Sanderson and and Gregg. So I've seen that these guys, sometimes you can sneaky get them a little bit later in the draft. And then next year you're like, whoa. How did they fall to that position? So I love Aginla here. He's going to play on the wing for me, but he could play center. Last thing I'll say about Aginla too, he was traded at the start of this year from Seattle to Kelowna. 
didn't have a big role on Seattle, but got to be a part of a team that won the championship. So that to me is a good learning experience from him. And you just take that and you apply it as a leadership tactic going forward. And Ross, imagine having left wing depth of Keith Kachuk's son and Jerome McGinley's son as the top Hilarious. two guys on that left side. Like, and the dad's trip just gets even better. I know you said you wanted to steer away from the Jerome McGinley stuff, but that's just a fun extra story to it. Totally. But like he, he was added to the U18 team after he was eliminated and he was third in points on the team. Six goals, six assists in seven games. That's good for 12 points en route to a gold medal there and had 84 points. 47 goals in 64 games, and then even improved the points per game with nine goals and 15 points in 11 playoff games. And you know what I like about this too, Pilsy? When the games tighten up in the playoffs, there's some hooking, there's some holding. Now refs may let some more things go. Zero penalty minutes in the playoffs. Nine goals, 15 points, zero penalty wow. minutes in 11 games. Yeah, and the thing... Um... I watched David St. Louis of EP. He does a let's watch video for a lot of these guys. Highly recommend it. We love David St. Louis, smart guy. Um, and what he showed is like, maybe all the highlights aren't where you're going to see a Ginla's strengths. It's, just the little things in between plays. Like he showed plays where Aginla is lifting opponent's sticks so that pucks can get to his teammate across the slot. Like it's just things like that where you may not realize how good that is, but if you're able to do those things consistently and cleanly, like you mentioned, no penalties, that's such a huge boost here for your team. So Ross, although he's not my guy, I do like the TJ in the pick. Hey, I like that. You're warming up to it. Good stuff. Um, who is your pick at number seven for the Ottawa Senators? Well, Ross, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. I'm going to draft best player available and positional need. In my opinion, I'm going with Zane Perrick from the Saginaw Spirit. I mean, you get a right-hand shot defenseman. Pause. Offenseman. Yeah, offenseman. Uh, and uh, sorry, Zane Perek. I feel like I've been on Perek. Now i got to switch to Perek. So Zane Perek is the guy I'm going with with the Saginaw Spirit. And this is a defenseman or offenseman that put up 96 points in 66 games he had 33 goals in 66 games like a half goal per game as a defenseman is absolutely nuts now there's pros and cons to Zane Parekh here I really think this is a home run swing for the Ottawa Senators too often they go for the safe guy and I feel like they don't take that swing I want them to take a swing here because I believe if they want to go for a safer option there's some right hand shot defensemen that they can scoop up later in the first round if they want to have two different styles of that but the skill that this guy has he's a one man power play unit go watch some of his highlights and the puck is glued to his stick He's able to toe drag and weave around players so easily. He's such a good skater. And he's the type of player, he has such confidence in his skills. When he's trying to break into the zone, he doesn't slow up or try to look for teammates or dump it in. No, none of that. He goes right at the players holding the blue line and just dekes through them, makes them look silly, opens up ice for his teammates, or he's got one of the best shots in this draft too as a defenseman. Like... I just feel like the potential, the ceiling for this guy, he might have one of the highest ceilings of this draft as well. However, doesn't come without risk as he's a guy that he doesn't have the size you would want at a six feet, 181 pounds. So not small, but certainly not big. And this could go two ways, Ross. I either think you could be looking at the next Eric Carlson here. Like, think about Eric Carlson when he was drafted. What was he, 156 pounds or something like that? Yeah. It was nuts how small he was. And people were like, oof, like, this is the guy the Ottawa Senators are risking right now. Like, didn't Pierre Dorian say Brian Murray told him, you're going to risk your career on this pick? And he's like, yeah, this yeah. is the guy I'm going to go with. Uh, so great move by Pierre Dorian there. Um so either he turns into Eric Carlson, that's best case scenario, or a guy that I think is kind of similar, and this would be this would be the kind of downside to him. 
maybe not a lot of people remember, but a guy like Ryan Merkley. Uh, I know him well because he's with the Guelph Storm. You guys know I was a Guelph Storm guy growing up. And he put up massive, massive points. San Jose drafted him. He's right-hand shot defenseman, brings a lot of offense. And now he's, playing for the, for now he's playing for the Kunlun Red Star in the KHL. Yes, he is now in the KHL. I mean, doing doing okay, 29 points, 64 games. But in the <laughs> NHL, he only got a sniff, 39 games and only six points. So it clearly didn't work out for him. So this is a risky pick. But I feel like if you're the Ottawa Senators, you got to start taking some risks and you got to have guys that can be major impactful players on your team sooner rather than later. So I just feel like it'd be so tough to watch Zane Parekh slide and the auto centers not take him if you wanted to go for a safer pick ross which i hummed and hawed about you could look at a guy like uh, anton siliev huge left shot defenseman or i think carter yakemchuk is a great pick as well maybe a bit of a reach at seven so if they were looking at him maybe trading down i'm not sure but i'm gonna stick with it for now zane parek is my guy okay uh, i'm down with that pick i i would be a little bit nervous about what the risk is there. I think that there's other guys who are just more guaranteed to reach a certain level of potential. And I think that the, there is that potential bust factor, but if you hit on Zane Perrick and he's like, a, he could be, you know, that, that top end type point total yeah. contributor at the NHL level. So I like the pick. I think I lean forward with the fact that Zeev Boyum and Lev Shunov are off the board, but I like the pick. Let us know in the comments who you would take for the Ottawa Senators. And then just to wrap up, we wanted to see who's, who's the next pass. Who are we just missing out on? And look, it's hard to pass this by for the Seattle Kraken at eighth overall. We're going to go with Anton Siliev, six foot seven defenseman out of the KHL who has had huge opportunity in the KHL. A guy who was averaging about 19 minutes per game over there started out red hot offensively. That cooled down a bit, but he still finished with 11 points. And get this, Pilsy, that breaks the all-time U18 yeah. KHL points. Not by a defenseman. Total. You know who he passes? Evgeny Kuznetsov and Vladimir Tarasenko. This yeah. is points. And we're talking about a six foot seven defenseman. Now, a lot of those points were in the first half of the season. Cool I'm up. not sure. The the high, high, high end for Siliev is Victor Hedman, but he's probably gonna fall closer to like a Darnell nurse type, I would say. Yeah, and that's fair. Still a good I mean, player. Still a good yeah, player. Exactly. And you're getting a six foot seven defenseman here. Like and I think he fits so nicely into Seattle's system because they really like a, a back end, a decor that is sound defensively and responsible. Like, look at all those guys. They don't have any offensive defensemen really on that team. Uh, so I think he would fit in nicely there. Okay, Pelzi, any final thoughts? I like this exercise. I think it's been fun to see it all play out. Shout out to us for the graphic. I think it looks pretty nice. Yes. And I want to know... Who wins this draft based on what we have here selected? Outside of Ottawa, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think all these teams are going to be happy with who they got. Okay, way to play no it down the middle, Pilsy. Great final thoughts on a mock draft 1.0. Let us know in the comments which picks you would make for who. I'd love to see this get into a full conversation, and I'd like it to get contentious. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Because I actually have some. Yes, I do have some final thoughts, absolutely. The Cleveland Monsters mm. play in one hell of a barn. They almost had 13,000 fans show up for an AHL game. That barn was rocking. May, maybe not the, the most intelligent fans. Uh, I feel like the Monsters had the refs in their back pocket and they got one penalty and the whole arena erupts into ref. You suck a uh, chance for a hit that surely was a penalty. So the fan, the fans maybe not so, uh, not so familiar with hockey here. I'm just kidding. I'm chirping the monsters fans because I'm disappointed that they got the overtime double overtime win over the Belleville senators last night, three, two with a goal that mad. Sogard is going to want back. It was a blocked shot that he completely bit on, and then the rebound just put into a wide-open net. The first game in Belleville Sense history to reach double overtime, and out of their six playoff games this year, 
four have gone into overtime. Shout out Stephen Holiday, though. That guy's a stud. Two assists. The guy is just dishing it. Left and primary right. that, assists, too. Like, oh. That backhand sauce on the first goal, unreal. Amazing. Guy is a complete stud. My final thoughts, world championships begin tomorrow, and we got to give stick taps, Billsy. I might be breaking news to you. You know what I'm going here? Nope, no clue. Brady Kachuk, captain of Team USA. Oh, nice. Love that. Captain material. So we can pencil him as captain of the Olympic team? Nah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, great tweet at Senators. The Sen said, uh, must be the spelling. We call it Captain TK, Captain nice. uh, here in Canada. But absolutely love that for Brady Kachuk. A well-earned Jeez. honor and uh, should shut up any haters that, look, even when this guy's among his peers around the league, He's still considered a leader because I saw yep. a, a very small subsection of Sens fans that are like, they made a mistake naming Brady Kachuk captain. Well, yeah. now he's an international captain as well. Guy's a complete stud. We're getting Brady on this summer. I'm not allowing another summer to go by without well, Brady. Kachuk I just got to meet him in Fort Lauderdale airport again. He, he, I told him we had your dad on, you got to come on now. And he seemed interested. So we just got to find a way to reach him. Let's rock and roll. All right, Pelsey, great show. Love doing these mock drafts. Stay tuned. We're going to do our full first round mock draft right before the NHL draft. We're actually going to buy our tickets for the first round of the NHL draft in 23 minutes when they go on sale. Flights are booked. LOSB will be covering the 2024 NHL draft with boots on the ground. What a great excuse to get to Vegas. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team, every day.